All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a clipping mask incorporating artwork from Adobe Illustrator back into Photoshop for some special effects. So I'm going to go to File and Open. I'm in Chapter 6, Folder 4, and I'm going to open up the end result here. So this is what we're going to try to make. Okay, notice how the foreground figures are normal, solid foreground figures. You've got a background, but the background is kind of captured within these little, like, squares, these little television monitors. Imagine a wall of 500 little monitors. And within each monitor, you're getting part of the background. Okay, so I want to show you how to create that kind of effect. So what I'm going to do is go to file and open again. I will open up file number two in that folder. <clears throat> and this is the original photo. Okay, what you're going to do is in order to slide a background effect behind these figures, you can't do it on a background layer. So I'm going to double click the word background and I'm going to call that original original photo okay what I need to do is somehow cut out these two figures and copy them onto their own layer so next to your layers is your channels and your paths and I'll pull out the paths panel so you can see that right here I've got a little tracing called Chris and Jonah Okay, as soon as I click on the name, I can see this blue outline. I have traced around these two figures. What I'm going to do with this tracing is go to the pop-up menu on my Paths panel and make it into a selection. That's going to ask me to feather. Feather means blur, and I don't want to blur the edges of my figures, so I'll just keep that at zero, and I'll click OK. I'll just put this paths panel back where it belongs over there. Now I have the two figures kind of selected and isolated here, and I want to make a copy of them. So Command J. That will make them jump up to another layer. You can see them right there. And that's good. What I also need to do is open up a pattern. I made a pattern in Adobe Illustrator, but I want to bring that pattern here into Photoshop. And what I need to do in order to do that is figure out the physical size and dimensions and resolution of this file. The way you get the technical data about an image is image menu, image size. So that's going to tell me right there. It's 10 inches wide, it's seven and a half inches tall, and the resolution is only 230. Okay, so I wanna remember that number, 230. I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna to go to File and Open again. Only this time, I'm gonna pick an Adobe Illustrator file. Okay, when I click Open, Photoshop is gonna recognize that is not a Photoshop file. So it's going to give me the import PDF box, which basically means tell Photoshop how to convert it into a photo so that Photoshop can use it. Because right now it's a different program. It's Illustrator. I want to bring it into Photoshop. Okay, this is 8.5 by 11, but notice the resolution doesn't match. So I'm going to kick that down to 230. So the resolution of this photo will match the resolution of this pattern that I'm about to bring in. And I'll click OK. So there we go. All I want to do is move this pattern over back into this photo. So what I'm going to do is Command A for select all of the photo or all of this pattern. Edit and I'm going to copy all of that pattern. Now when I come back over here, I go to edit, paste, and we'll drop in a pattern. But that is the opposite of what I was trying to achieve. Okay, I, I'm blocking out most of the background. I want the background to show up in all these little squares. I can definitely move it down one. 
So now the two figures we've isolated aren't affected by the background, but it is covering the plants. I want the plants to show up inside these squares. So the trick here is your pattern has to go below your original photo. Okay, it's got to sit underneath the photo. Now, the other thing is when I turn these off, all the gaps between these squares, I want them to fill in with black. So I need a separate layer just for the black. I'm going to create a brand new layer here. And I'm going to pull that all the way down. I can double click on the name and we'll just call that black layer. D sets my default colors. Option key in the big delete will fill that layer with the foreground color, in this case, black. And now I can come up to my pattern. Okay, what I want to happen, and I'll just turn off this black layer so you can see it for a second, is everywhere this original photo sits right on top of one of these little black squares, I want the photo to show up inside those squares. Okay, so the layer under the photo will be my clipping mask or clipping group, and the layer above it will fall down into it. Basically, everywhere there's part of the photo that sits on top of a square, it's gonna be trapped in that square. So I'll just turn on all my layers. I'm gonna hover right on the line that separates my original photo from my pattern. Doesn't matter which layer you're on, I'll just start on the original. I'm gonna hover on this line that separates those two layers and I get a hand pointer. But on my keyboard, if I hold my option key, and this is really important, do not press on the mouse. If I hold the option key, I'm gonna move my mouse, I'm not gonna press on it, I'm just gonna move my mouse up and down like this until I get this little box that shows up. Okay, and you'll notice the little box has an arrow that is pointing downward on this little icon. So what that's telling me is, I'll let go of my option key for a second, the photo above is gonna go down into the pixels on the layer below. They're gonna be trapped inside these squares. So I hover over the line, hold option and move my mouse until I see that icon and I hold option and click. And now the top layer has been indented, it's gonna pushed over to the side. So that's telling me this is now a trapped layer. There's an arrow pointing down right here. So all of this photo is now getting trapped inside these boxes. I can tell these boxes are the clipping group because the name of the layer has been underlined. This photo above is just so you don't see the figures. See, they're trapped inside the squares too. That's the key about using Photoshop. This came from a question from a student a long time ago. They saw an effect like this in a magazine brought the magazine in to me and said, how did they do this? And I said, well, what if your boss asked you to do that? What, are you gonna tell your boss no? You gotta be able to practice enough so that you can just look at an image and kind of know what they did. Kind of like um, reverse engineering. I can look at an image knowing how Photoshop works. I can pretty much figure out in my brain how they got that image to look that way. So that was why I came up with this demo. Now this was an image in a skateboarding magazine, but you can do it with anything, obviously, just a picture of me and my boy. But practice with your own photos. See something that you think was done in Photoshop, take your own photos and try to replicate that. And that's what we've done right here, okay? If I didn't want this background trapped in these squares, I could hover over that line, option click, and just disable the clipping group. Option click again and reestablish the clipping group. So it's a really easy process, but you get some really cool effects. So I don't need this pattern anymore. We'll close that. Don't need to save it. 
this is the file you're going to turn into me now that you know how to use clipping groups you option click the line between the layers your trapped object is underneath your photo is on top and we'll be doing this again in chapter seven but this is a brief introduction to um, clipping groups option clicking the line that separates the two layers you get some really cool photoshop effects